So what's the ideology of the Terence then? So the Terence, that's T-E-R-R-A-N-S, Terence, based on the word terra, not, not terror as in terrorist, but terra, the earth. Because that's their perspective. From, from the point of view of the Terrans, the most important thing is the survival of the human species. That's, that's unquestioned for them. They, <clears throat> so their dominant argument is how, how to preserve the human species against the risk of possible extermination at the hands of highly advanced artifacts who may become so superior to us that they may just not consider us worthy of consideration. I mean, they may just ignore us, do something that's really bad to us and not give a damn, or they may become you know, directly hostile to us, feeling that there's a fundamental clash of interests between their interests and, and humans. And because they're so superior to us, they can just wipe us out with ease the way we human beings wipe out chickens. Right? We breed them and every day the chicken thinks, oh, these human beings, they're wonderful. You know, they, they feed me and you know, give me somewhere to live and I don't have to go around hunting and I, I just get all my food. Oh, aren't they wonderful? <laughs> Until one fatal day, right? So, by, by analogy, you can imagine these, these, these artifacts could do whatever they like with us if they were sufficiently advanced. So the, the, the Terran intellectuals, the ideologists on, on the Terran side, will probably argue that these, these artifacts could become so hugely superior to us that we, as, as human beings, we could not understand them. We wouldn't be able to predict their behavior towards us, their attitudes towards us. Their circuitry, the, the number of circuits they have is just so vastly superior in numbers to, to what we have and qualitatively superior. They're just smarter than us, let, let alone thinking a million times faster than we do. But, but, but by rearranging the circuitry and, and by understanding what intelligence is and having an intellectual intelligence theory they may be able to qualitatively go way beyond us, not, not just in, in numbers, not just in quantitative terms, but qualitative terms. They may become smarter than us the way we as human beings are smarter than mice, right? in that sense. So the, the, the Artilics, sorry, the, the Terrans will argue that one of the major themes, one of the key words in this whole species dominance debate is risk. As human beings, we just would not know what these artifacts would feel towards us. So, artifact ethics would be what? What? How, how would they feel about us? I mean, s some people argue, oh, oh, these artifacts, they're highly intelligent, right? Therefore, they would realize that we human beings are their parents. And therefore, da, 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 therefore, they, the intellects, should be nice to us, right? Because we're their parents. But that's a human way of thinking. Right? Who, who is to say that these intellects may become so superior to us they don't give a damn, right? And we just get wiped out either explicitly or just as a side effect of something they do. So, so this whole debate, one of the key words is risk. So as a Terran, as a Terran intellectual, as, as one of the ideologists of Terranism, would be the strategy that the only way to be sure that this risk of human species annihilation at the hands of the advanced artifacts sometime in the future, the only way to ensure that that risk is zero is what? Well, common sense is that the artifacts are never built in the first place. Right? It will become fundamental policy, political strategy, policy, by the Terrans, that the cosmos are never allowed to build advanced artifacts. 
there'll be, there'll be kind of global, you know, in the context of a global state, hopefully in half a century or so, in that context, that there's an upper limit, a global, a planetary, legal upper limit to artificial intelligence levels. So, so I can imagine that being pushed for by political groups of Terrans. And this whole debate, you know, should we, shouldn't we build artifacts, this will be on everyone's mind as, as, as the home robots get smarter and smarter. It, it, it'll, just, it'll just be part of, it'll be in the air. Everyone will be conscious of it, everyone will be talking about it, thinking about it. There'll, there'll be zillions of books and articles written, you know, all the ism, the pro, the con, all the fine little detail. T -t -t today, 2010, we're only just, these issues are only just getting into the media. But in five to ten years, everyone will, will know about these issues because we'll be forced to just, just, just by observing how, how much smarter these machines are getting every year. You know, we won't have any choice. <laughs> we'll be forced to take it seriously. We, we won't be able in, in the future to just dismiss it as a piece of science fiction the way it is today. You know, most people today cannot get their minds, human minds, around the concept of an artelect with its trillion, trillion times greater capacities to human beings, thinking a million times faster, unlimited memory, go anywhere, do anything, change its form, immortal. Right? That, that sounds like science fiction, but it's coming. Right? And it will come this century. So if, if you're a young parent now, your child, or if you're old like me, your grand your grandchildren will be confronted by this issue. Okay. So, uh, so the the Terrans will probably legislate an upper limit. You know, a safe. You know, so, so these artifacts would then be smart enough to be useful, you know, really, really effective as household servants, if you like, but not so smart that they're potentially threatening. So they'll, they'll compromise. You know, up to this up to this level, AIQ, artificial intelligence quotient, fine, no problem. But beyond that, becomes illegal. Anyone going beyond that, creating a creature above that, becomes a criminal, gets prosecuted. Except for would be governments. Right. Right. For for reasons of national defence. So, what happens then? But then, that ideology will be flatly opposed by the quasi-religious arguments of the cosmos. Because they will then argue that the Terrans, in a sense, are, are committing, here's a new term here, de deicide, the killing of God. Killing of God, day, day aside. Because if you don't build these hyper-capable artifacts, you're not building gods. Right? So in a sense, you're potentially not creating these wonderful creatures. And that, that will be absolutely anathema to, to the cosmos. They'll be deeply, almost religiously opposed to, to that Terran doctrine of, a, of an upper limit. So, okay. Uh, so first, the dominant argument of the, of the Terrans is to preserve the dominance of the human species. They, they want human beings to remain number one. Whereas the cosmos want the Artelex to become number one. Therefore, human beings become number two. Okay. So you have just a flat contradiction. They're just utterly oppose these, these two ideological human groups, the, the, the Cosmos and the Terrans. Okay, uh, so what are some other arguments of the Terrans? Well, if, if the Cosmos are motivated princi principally by a feeling of awe, you know, A-W-E, build, building gods, and, you know, they get out into the universe, and, you know, much bigger things of life. Just, just so much bigger than, than our puny little human existence. Um, 
then the the major the dominating feeling motive of the Terrans would be fear. Fear of what? Well, fear of the fear of the artifacts, fear of the cyborgs, because they're virtually the same thing from, from the Terran viewpoint. Fear of being wiped out. Fear of alien difference. I mean, uh, racism, for example, is fear of difference on tiny differences. We're both like you see somebody who's a little different, maybe a bit like this, or their hair color's a bit different, or their skin color's a little different. And the way they behave you know, culturally is a bit different. But that, that's nothing in comparison to what the differences would be between human beings and cyborgs and artifacts. Right? I mean, those creatures are truly alien. So there's this inherent fear in, in many human beings of, of difference, the fear of difference. Right? I've, I've read there was a time in you know, way back, uh, more than 100,000 years ago, when there were, there were quite a few, a string of humanoid species. And theories are that we were only the, the only one left because we were the most murderous, the fiercest. We just wiped out the rest. I don't know, maybe. Anyway, so it, it, see, it, it makes sense to me that there's evolution, that maybe evolutionarily selected for to be fearful of difference. Because maybe it made sense in, in our evolutionary past, Darwinian past, to, be, to, to fear other, other humanoid species. Yeah? So, so um, this, this fear of difference is, will be a major motivator for the Terrans. They, they will reject the cyborgs. I mean, they, they will be opposed not only to the, the cosmos who want to build artifacts, they'll also object to, to the cyborg, cyborgists. The cyborgists, we'll jump ahead a little. They, they want to build cyborgs. They, they want to become artifact gods themselves. But by, by you know, where is it? Adding adding components to them to themselves. So they convert themselves from human to to artifacts. So part machine, part human, cyborg, cybernetic organism. So the Terrans will reject them because very quickly, once you start adding even just tiny amounts of intellectual material to, to your own brain, very quickly uh, that, that material absolutely swamps your human capacities. Uh, even with tiny amounts of, of artifactual material, it's just so powerful in its computational abilities. So the, the Terrans will reject the cyborgs, they'll reject the cosmos. Okay? Uh, another argument is that the, intellect, the Terran intellectuals will use is uh, the, the cosmos, how... I mean, if you ask yourself, how do you go about building a machine that's smarter than you are. I mean, if you're going to design it, how is it possible that with your finite human intelligence, how can you design something that's smarter than you, that requ presumably requires a higher level of intelligence than you have? Right? So 